Now we are going to talk about air ambulances, something that's become very, very critical in these COVID times when we are talking about shortages, we are talking about critically ill patients and they having to be transferred to destinations where they can get the best care possible. I'm now joined by Dr. Shalini Nalwar and Dr. Rahul Singh Sardar. These, uh, these, uh, this is a team of doctors who has in fact established something called ICAT, something that is an international critical care air transfer team. And they are uh, a new organization. In fact, I believe you only started in uh, September last year. But you have already created a world record that you have transferred today your 80th patient on ECMO. ECMO, of course, is something that's even more critical than some patient being on ventilator. Dr. Shalini and Dr. Rahul, thank you for joining us. How uh, important is something like this? This is something that we hear about in the first world countries, perhaps. And you have created a world record in transferring so many number of ECMO-dependent patients on your uh, air ambulance? Yes, um, uh, although yes, this is... Yes, although the integrated air ambulance service was um, uh, inaugurated in September, yes, our service has been established for more than like four years. Like, you know, we've been operational in India for last four years. And um, uh, of course, the... Patients requiring the ECMO, that is extra corporal membrane oxygenation, uh, lung bypass, uh, which is which comes after the ventilator. So, if you look at ventilator as a uh, life support therapy, ECMO is advanced life support. That is much more advanced than ventilator, where the lung, uh, the diseased lung, uh, the blood is bypassing the diseased lung, and the oxygen is given from outside, creating an artificial lung outside and then pumping uh, oxygenated blood back into the body. So when the ventilator fails, this is a next step. And this is one of the rescue therapy, either to recovery or like call it a bridge to recovery or bridge to transplant. Hello. And indeed, we are proud to establish this service in such a short time. I space. believe even today you have done uh, three air transfers. In fact, uh, I understand that even today you have done three air transfers, one from Nagpur to Chennai, another from Mysore to Bengaluru, and another from Bhopal to Hyderabad. Uh, in the last few days, uh, the number of critically ill COVID patients is what you must, must have been your maximum traffic that you are actually transporting. And perhaps the destinations in the south more better equipped or should we see this as an indication that the, uh, the, the cities uh, up north are in fact overwhelmed and therefore bringing their patients to the south of the country? Uh, I think that is not the case. Uh, the, most of the tertiary centers in Hyderabad and Chennai uh, are the transplant units uh, which are uh, highly specialized in uh, lung transplant and uh, they have a very robust uh, uh, critical care and uh, ECMO service uh, available in their uh, in their tertiary centers and uh, so that's why uh, Hyderabad and Chennai are becoming the hub for accepting uh, highly critical uh, COVID uh, patients who are requiring uh, ECMO. Well, uh, Dr. Shalini, what kind of, uh, you know, challenges do you face in transferring uh, these people who are very, very critically ill? I understand that when it's a COVID patient who is being transferred, you also have something called an isolation pod inside and uh, there is a medical team along with them. It's a bed-to-bed -bed transfer that you actually undertake. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, of course, this um, uh, the patients transfer, they need to be inside isolation pod because we know the uh, epicenter of uh, COVID was, uh, it used to be airports in the past. And then that's where it all uh, like erupted. So, no uh, COVID patients were allowed to enter the airport. Forget about the aircraft. So, this is when we got this German isolation port imported that and then proved to the uh, authorities and the pilots and uh, and kind of convinced them this is safe to transfer on them. And we did the first isolation port transfer on the like COVID transfer on isolation port. And that I think that is one of our biggest achievement uh, among the ICAT history, whatever we have done so far. Uh, of course, we, we do better to transfers and because we are dealing with highly critical care patients, we in fact, we have stopped doing any regular ventilator patient or regular yeah. oxygen patients. So uh, we are undertaking 90% of our transfers are ECMO patients. We initiate ECMO in the re very remote locations where there is no facility and then we transfer them back to the hospitals where either it is a transplant unit or ECMO unit. Uh, it is highly critical care transfer. I would okay, one final question to Dr. Rahul. 
if I may just ask one final question to Dr. Rahul. Uh, this is something that's considered very, very expensive, very elitist. Does it continue to remain so? Because this is, we are talking about uh, ultra-critical care. Uh, and what are the kind of numbers that uh, you are getting? Uh, and is there scope for actually more uh, such service to come in because the demand must be huge? Yes, yes. Actually, it is uh, it is cost intensive, unfortunately. But you know, recently we've uh, transferred one of uh, Indigo's uh, cabin crew completely free of cost with uh, Sonosud. Uh, we both came together and did it completely free of cost. Although, yes, the the uh, the cost intensive nature of this device is uh, the 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 cost of the disposables, and uh, which is in use in ECMO. Unfortunately, we don't produce them in India, and uh, we have to import them. And uh, yes, yeah, so, so uh, uh, it is kind of costly, but uh, yeah. people like uh, ICAT Foundation from our side and people like I mean, Mr. Sonu Sood and other organizations, if we come together, we can make it much more cost effective and if, uh, especially if we can get some support from the government. Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Shalini and Dr. Rahul for joining us.